what is the concentration of uh, sugar in coca cola and what if i told you that cbsc does ask these type of questions in board exam will you believe me well believe it or not i have got you some similar kind of questions today in this session and we are going to talk about concentration we are going to talk about solutions and we are going to learn how to solve the problems because numericals are very 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 important from this chapter called solutions why are we studying this or why are we watching this video like i said cbsc has allotted seven marks for your board examination to this chapter and we can't afford to lose seven marks right also with this video you will be able to excel in your board exam as well as practice some previous year questions yes so what are you waiting for what am i waiting for let's get start started yes let's take a look at it okay now before i start with some of the problems let's take a look at some of the most important formula from this chapter which are absolutely required for solving numericals so the first one is percentage weight by weight how can you calculate it mass of solute divided by mass of solution into 100 okay that's how you calculate it percentage weight by volume how do you calculate that mass of solute divided by volume of solution into 100 because percentage is there right you can see here that percentage is right here isn't it right here take a look at it take a look at it percentage is there so that means multiply by 100 I and mean, that does not take a rocket science isn't it that is what very 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 common sense absolutely right now next is percentage volume by volume volume of a solute divided by volume of solution into 100 mole fraction oh my god that's i think the most common term from this chapter isn't it mole fraction how do you calculate na divided by na plus b and na plus nb plus nc also can you see that this is unitless this has no unit here okay this has no unit next is parts per million parts per million is actually absolutely similar to percentage volume do you see mass of solute mass of solute divided by mass of solution mass of solution into 100 but here it is 10 to the power 6 here it is 10 to the power 6 that's all that you have to remember that's all that you have to remember moving on to molarity and molality guys do not get confused molarity and molality molarity is calculated as moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters and in liters in liters not in milliliters if it is given in milliliter you will convert it to liter and molality moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kg okay and now we are going to solve some questions are you ready i am ready let's go ahead The first question has come for actually one mark. Okay, yeah, this is one difficulty that we always face whenever we have to convert something from Google slide to, you know, PPT. Anyway, so 50 ml of an aqueous solution of glucose, that is C6H12O6, molar mass is given as 180 gram per per mole, and it contains 6.02 into 10 to the power 22 molecules. the concentration of the solution will be what is concentration molarity we have to calculate the molarity shall we do it shall we do it let's do it okay so how are we going to solve it i'm going to solve it the answer you have seen but no problem let's get to it okay so we have to calculate molarity now molarity is definitely what is molarity my dear student tell me the formula quickly tell me the formula in the chat box everybody yes practice with me yes number of moles isn't it number of moles of solute number of moles of solute divided by what is it volume of solution absolutely right yes volume of solution in in what did i say in what is the unit in liters okay So that means that what are we calculating? We are calculating number of moles of glucose because it is given as glucose, isn't it? Yes, number of moles of glucose divided by volume liter. Yes. So number of moles of glucose divided by volume. All right, divided by volume. I'm writing it down here. Okay. 
Now, what am I going to do? Now, we know that one mole is equal to Avogadro number, isn't it? Which is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules. Am I right? I am right. <laughs> Too much of conf confidence, are you thinking? Well, that's because I studied. Did you? No worry. You, after this class, you are also going to have that much of confidence. Okay. So now we know that one mole is equal to Avogadro number, which is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 moles. 20, 10 to the power 23 molecules. Yeah. Am I right? Yes. Correct. Now, my dear student, do you see that it contains 6.02 into 10 to the power 22 molecules? Isn't it? Yes. So that means that 6.02 into 10 to the power 22 molecules will be equal to what? Let's calculate that also. Here, here, here we go. 6.02. Yeah, it's just 0, 2. Anna, this is 0, 2. Okay. 0, 2 into 10 to the power 22 molecules. Correct. Is equal to what we will do is see what we will do is we will take this and then divide it by Avogadro number. Okay, divide it by Avogadro number. So 6.02 into 10 to the power 22. Okay, divided by Avogadro number. Okay, that means 6.023. And to 10 to the power 23. Isn't it? Yes. That means that this is equal to 10 to the power minus 1 mole. Am I right? Yes. It is equal to 10 to the power minus 1 mole. Am I right? Absolutely correct. Yes. So now, what do we have to calculate? Are we done with it? No. Now we have to calculate the molarity. Isn't it? Now we have to calculate the molarity. So let's calculate that. What will be molarity? Molarity will be equal to 0.1. Okay. Molarity will be equal to 10 to the power minus 1 means 0.1. Isn't it? 10 to the power minus 1. I can also write it as 0.1. Correct? Okay. So let's do this here. I'm going to draw a line here so that you understand that after this I'm coming here. Okay. After this I'm coming here. So let's write it down. Okay. So molarity. I've changed the color so that you can clearly identify. Molarity is equal to 0 0.1 divided by, see it is written as 50 ml. 50 ml if I convert it to liters, what will I get? 50 milliliter converted to liter, I will get 0 0.05. I will get 0 0.05 because 50 divided by 1000. Am I right? So that means I am writing 0 0.05. Correct? Yes. This, if I calculate, will I get 2 moles? Yes. I will get 2m. I will get 2m. Correct? Yes. And that is your answer. Take a look at it. See, 2.0m. That is your answer. That's how you figured it out. Yes. So, for one mark, you will have to do this much. Or if you are very good with your calculation, then you can do it in your staff. Okay. Moving on, everybody. Now, let's take a look at another very important formula which is related to osmotic pressure, okay? Now, what is osmotic pressure? Osmotic pressure is given as pi is equal to ICRT, okay? Pi is equal to ICRT. Now, what are all of these? Let's understand that also. What is pi? Pi is osmotic pressure. I is the dimensionless Van Hoff index. Everybody knows this. What is I? I is the Van Hoff index. If you don't remember, this will give you a clear, clear revision, guys. Okay? This will be an absolute revision. All the formulas, all the important formulas and the numerical. This is exactly what you need to score well in this chapter. Now, okay, C. What is C? C is the molecular concentration of solute in the solution. Yes, C is the molecular concentration of the solute in the solution. Let's write that down also so that you don't get confused. C is molecular concentration of concentration of solute. Okay. Of 
सॉल्यूट इन द सोल्यूशन करेक्ट यस वॉट इज आर आर इज द आइडियल गैस कॉन्स्टेंट नो बट इफ गेट्स दैट यस आर इज द आइडियल गैस कॉन्स्टेंट टेक अ लुक एट इट आर इज आइडियल गैस कॉन्स्टेंट और राइट एंड वॉट इज स्टीम आइडियल स्टूडेंट ऑब्वियसली टेम्परेचर इन कैलविन दैट्स इट दिस वॉज इजी राइट दिस वॉज एन इजी गैस टी इज टेम्परेचर इन कैलविन क्लियर all the terms in the formula is clear right all the terms in the formula is clear now when we come to osmotic pressure there are three or there are three types of solution that we have to talk about one is isotonic solution where the solution have equal equal osmotic pressure that is pi 1 is equal to pi 2 okay this will be given in the question and from there you might have to derive the question okay all right derive the answer basically then you have hypertonic solution solution which has less osmotic pressure than the other solution so there will be two solution out of which one will have less osmotic pressure and the other will have more hypotonic solution the solution which has higher osmotic pressure than the other solution so if there are two solutions given you will it will be written that one is hypotonic and the other one has more osmotic pressure from there you will have to derive the answer now based on this based on this formula shall we solve a question let's check it out how to do this yes i will do it with you and in fact i want you all to have a notebook and do it with me so that in your 28th paper you don't get confused that mom how do we do this we don't know you don't do this okay so let's take a look at it okay now you have a question which says that for a for a for a five person solution Where is my cursor? One second, which one? One second here. Yes, here I go. Here I go. Found it. Yes. Okay. For a five percent solution of urea, molar mass is is equal to sixty gram per mole. Okay. You have to calculate the osmotic pressure at three hundred Kelvin. See, temperature is given. R value is given. Yes. Molar mass is given. Okay. So let's write down what are the things that are given to you already. Okay, what are the things that are given to you already? Okay, this has come in the exam for two marks. This has come in the exam for two marks. See, two has shifted here. Okay, this always does happen from Google Slides to PPT. Anyway, let's take a look at it. Okay, so uh, what are the things that are given to you? Given. So in CBSC, when we are pre presenting the paper, we're going to write it like this. Okay, we will write it. step wise so that we get step marking also okay so given is 5% solution of urea okay 5% solution of urea which means which means 5 g urea in 100 ml solution correct which means 5 g urea in 100 ml solution let's write that down 5 g urea in 100 ml solution correct correct everybody yes now molar mass is is equal to molar mass is equal to already it is given 60 g per mole right so let's write that down here 60 g per mole okay this is also given to us these are all given data that i am writing okay temperature t is also given t is what 300 kelvin 300 kelvin okay and r is also given so r also let's write it down r is equal to 0.0821 liter yes atm K to the power minus one mole to the power minus one. Correct, everybody. Yes. Now, what do we have to calculate? What do we have to calculate? We have to calculate the osmotic pressure. Okay. And we know the formula of osmotic pressure, right? So let's let's calculate it. Okay. Osmotic pressure is equal to. Check it out, guys. Osmotic pressure is equal to what is it? Pi. And pi is equal to I C R T. I C R T. That's the formula. Yes, that's the formula. Now here, I will be equal to one. Why? 
because urea is not an electrolyte. Yes, urea is not an electrolyte. It will not dissociate and we already know that I is equal to 1 when it is not an electrolyte. So, I is equal to 1. Okay, let's write that down. I is equal to 1. Urea is not an electrolyte. I am basically spoon feeding guys. You have to remember this. Urea is not an electrolyte. Absolutely from the basic I have done it. Okay. ICRT. So that means we can write pi is equal to CRT. Yes, pi is equal to CRT. Since there is no space, I am going to the next page. Okay. So that means that pi is equal to, what do I have to write? I will write 5 divided by 60, okay, into 1000 divided by 100, correct? It is 5 divided by 60, yes, alright, into 1000 divided by 100, okay, not only that, we also write the R value. What is the R value? Into 0.0821. Yes. Into 300. Alright. Now what do we have? 0 cancel, 0 cancel. 3. Then 3, 2, 0, 6. 20 here. And 5, 4, 0, 20. Yes. So 1000 divided by 4. And if you solve this completely, then what will you get? Yes, what will we get? We will get pi is equal to 20.52 around, okay? 20.5288. Alright, how did I get this guys? How did I get this? I'll tell you that also, okay? Now we know that concentration is equal to moles divided by volume, okay? Concentration is, is equal to moles divided by volume which means that given mass divided by molar mass into 1 by volume isn't it isn't it from there i got this value okay from there i got this value let okay, you want me to write that down let me write that down Chalo, let me write that down i will also show you the rough work here so that you know okay so that you know okay Concentration is equal to what did I say? Moles divided by volume. Yes. Which means given mass divided by molar mass. Given mass divided by molar mass into what will it be? 1 by volume. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. Now, now we can also write it as given mass divided by molar mass into 1000 into 1000 divided by V milliliter because we have to convert it into, we have to convert that, right? So, we will write it like this, given mass divided by molar mass into, into 1000 divided by VML. Correct? So from here, from here, from this basically, I wrote it like this. Okay? I wrote it like this. Don't you forget it. Here is the rough work. Take a look at it. This is how you can solve it. Okay? Alright. So what is our answer? Our answer is this. This is our answer. Alright my dear student? Got it? Clear? Absolutely clear? No doubt? Write down. Easy peasy biryani is tasty. Once you know the formula, there is nothing that you have to be scared of. Okay? There is nothing that you have to be scared of. Okay. Moving on. Moving on to the next question. The next question is, the next question is, everybody take a look at it. Again, my cursor is gone. Just a second. Found it. Huh. Okay, now, so what we are given? We are given 30 gram of urea, yes, and M is equal to 60 gram per mole. It is dissolved in 846 gram of water. So you are given W1, which is mass of urea. You are given W2, which is mass of water, okay. 
then you are given molar mass of water you also know molar mass of you are, you are you know the molar mass of water you also know the molar mass of urea correct yes molar mass is already given right here you are given isn't it okay what do you have to calculate you have to calculate the vapor pressure of water for this solution if vapor pressure of pure water vapor pressure of pure water is already given here okay vapor pressure of pure water is already given here okay and this is the temperature that they have given so now let's calculate first let's write down what are the things that are already given to you okay let's write that down so what do we have we have we have a mass of urea mass of urea is equal to w1 and w1 is already given as 30 gram write that down okay next what you're going to write you're going to write mass of water right bacha mass of water w2 is equal to what what is given 846 grams see all of this data is given to you it is already given to you yes so you don't have to worry about it 846 gram okay now you know that molar mass of urea is given so let's write that down also molar mass of urea that is m1 let's write okay m1 is equal to 60 gram per mole see 60 gram per mole okay now molar mass of water let's do that also molar mass of water yes what is molar mass of water you can calculate it yeah 18 gram per mole isn't it 18 gram per mole so much of hard work so much of hard work yes <laughs> anyway just so that you get your marks okay now so that means so what do we know what do we know we know that h2o will be equal to p naught minus ps okay divided by p naught correct yes do you know this you know this you know this isn't it now that means that that means that let's write it down okay let's write it down see check it out check it out what is written 23.8 okay 23.8 okay so let's write it down here 23.8 okay minus ps we do not know ps okay let's write that down again p naught is given to us that is 23.8 correct yes now that is equal to w1 into m2 divided by m1 into w2 correct that ulta ulta yes exactly so let's write that down here okay w1 which is basically of urea yes into okay divided by what will i get yes correct okay all right now if i calculate this what will i get what will i get let's check it out i think i'm writing it too big i will not be able to finish the solution can i start from here i'll be starting from here okay So you just basically you are going to substitute the values now, okay? Substitute the values, what will you get? 30 into 18 divided by 60 into 846. Correct. 60 into 846, isn't it? So what will you get? Calculate this. Try calculating. I don't have a calculator. You probably do. You probably do. Come on guys, come on, come on, come on. Calculate it, calculate it. What will you get here? What will you get here guys? So it will basically be 23.8 minus PS. This we can take it here, right? This we can take it here, okay? You have a calculator, okay? So let's write it down here. 23.8 minus PS is equal to, you solve this. Let me take the calculator and solve it because 
This much of mathematics even I do not know. This much of mathematics even I do not know. What is the value? Uh, 13 to 18 divided by 16 to 846. Okay. Alright. It comes to 0 0.0106. Okay. Comes to 0 0.0106. 0106 into 23.8. This 23.8 cross multiplication, right? Into 23.8. What will be our result? Our result will be, okay guys, calculate this, yeah? Then what will you get? After this, what you can do is, PS you can write, PS after you calculate this. Alright, let's calculate this as well. You have a calculator with you, right? You guys have a calculator with this with you, right? For right, right now you can calculate. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we are getting a value of 0 0.2523. Yes, 0 0.2523. Okay, so that means 23.8 minus this value. This is equal to 0 0.2523. Which is equal to the minus, simple minus, right? It will be what? 23.55? 8 minus this 20. 23.55 okay 23.55 so that is your answer that is your answer since it is asked for what it is asked for vapor pressure of water yes calculate the vapor pressure of water you must write the unit here how about you tell me in the chat box what is the unit here what is the unit here i'm asking you tell me what is the unit here do not forget unit because unit carries at least half marks in your exam. Okay. Unit carries at least half marks in your exam. Now, the next question that is part B of this is write two differences between ideal solution and non-ideal solution. Oh my god. Easy peasy biryani is tasty. You guys biryani is tasty. You guys are getting free of cost to mark. Everybody knows this. This is the easiest question that can come, right? So let's write it down here. Ideal solution. We have ideal solution and non-ideal solution. Okay? Sure. Now, let's write that in white. What is the first thing? They obey Raoult's law. Isn't it? Obey Raoult's law. Yes. And they do? No. Do not obey Raoult's law. Okay. Next. Second point would be Second point would be, uh, 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 what can be, what can you write? Uh, heat is uh, neither absorbed nor evolved. Yes, heat is neither absorbed nor evolved but here what will happen heat can be evolved or absorbed that's it easy peasy biryani is tasty isn't it heat can be evolved or absorbed That's it. That's it. Good. Good to go. Shall we move on then? Shall we move on? Let's not waste time. Let's solve more. Okay. Now here we have some more important formula guys. Do you see how I'm giving you the formula and then I'm solving the same type of questions? Yes. This is very important guys. This is very important. There will be more problems that are related to this. So do not forget. 
Now we have relative lowering in pressure. How will we calculate this? RLVP relative lowering in vapor pressure is calculated as P0 minus PS divided by P0, which we just now used. Just now we used P0 minus PS divided by P0. Yes, see? That's exactly what we did. Yes. Is equal to Ix solute. Okay? Ix solute. Now, what is I? I is Benthoff factor. Everybody knows this. Yes? Just some time back only we did that. Xa is mole fraction of non-volatile solid. Okay? Ps is vapor pressure of solution and P0 is vapor pressure of pure solvent. Okay, vapor pressure of pure solvent. Now, if you see that elevation in boiling point, then this is how you are going to solve it. Delta Pb is equal to I into Kb molality. Okay, so Kb is equal to, how do you calculate Kb? Kb will be calculated as R. Remember that? Same, same thing, same value you have to add. R. Okay, then, then what do you have? into m1 into tb square divided by 1000 into delta h vapor. Now see, kb is a bilioscopic constant, okay. tb is bp of the solvent that is boiling point of the solvent. Delta h vapor is molar enthalpy of vaporization. All the factors are explained here. Now, Depression in freezing point. A lot of questions every single year. In the past five years of question paper, if you check out, a lot of questions has, have come from here. Okay, let's mark this. In fact, in your sample paper also, you will find some questions that are related to depression in freezing point. So do not skip this. If you can, at least tonight, practice 10 questions that are related to this so that you can absolutely ace it when it comes to your exam. So delta Tf is equal to I multiplied by Kf. That is molality again. What is Kf? Kf is R into M1 into Tf square divided by 1000 into delta H fusion. Okay. That is molar enthalpy of fusion. Tf is the freezing point of the solvent K. Kf is cryoscopic constant. Okay. T take, a, take a look at the difference. Here you have ebullioscopic constant. Here you have cryoscopic constant. Cryoscopic constant is used for freezing point. Ebulli eb Why am I not able to pronounce it now? Ebullioscopic constant is used for elevation in boiling point. Okay. Now, are we ready to solve some uh, solve some questions? Let's do it. Chal. So, a four person solution W by W of sucrose. Okay. Where M is equal to 342 gram per mole in water has a freezing point of 271.15 Kelvin. Calculate the freezing point of 5% glucose M is equal to 180 gram per mole in water. You are given the freezing point of pure water that is 273.15 Kelvin. Just guess. How do we solve this? Guess how will we solve it? Come on guys. You can guess. You can guess. Chal, first let's write what are the things that are given to us. Let's write that. So, mass of sucrose is given to us. Yes. Mass of sucrose. Huh? Let's find it out. Chal. Let mass of sucrose be 4 gram. Okay. Let mass of sucrose is equal to 4 gram. Okay. So that means that mass of water will be how much? 100 minus 4, 96 gram. Yes. So, mass of water is equal to 100 minus 4, right? 100 minus 4 gram is equal to 96 gram. Correct everybody? Yes. Now, M of sucrose. M of sucrose is given, it is what? 342 gram per mole. 342 gram per mole. Correct? Yes. So that means that delta Tf, guys, it is freezing point, right? Freezing point is given. That means, that means, what are we doing? We are calculating depression in freezing point, okay? We will be taking care of depression in freezing point. So delta Tf is equal to... How will we calculate delta Tf, my dear student? Huh? How will we calculate delta Tf? 
first of all we have to find out the delta tf will be definitely this minus this 273.15 minus 271.15 kelvin right yes pure solvent minus pure solvent minus this okay pure solvent minus this okay so that means the delta tf is equal to check it out 273.15 kelvin minus 271.15 kelvin which is equal to 2 kelvin this much match even i know and i hope that even you know okay now it's time for us to use the formula okay what is the formula what is the formula guys delta tf is equal to what do we know i into kf into molality yes i into kf into m m is basically what molality Chal, let me write that down here this is molality Achha, i will be equal to 1 because what is this this is sucrose will sucrose is sucrose an electrolyte? Will it dissociate completely? Not at all. So I is equal to 1. Yes, so I is equal to 1. That means that I can write it as Kf into M. Correct? Correct everybody. Now what is M? How am I going to calculate M? Let's do this. I'm going to divide it here. Okay, I'm going to divide it here. Now, check it out. Okay. And also, I have already figured that delta Tf is equal to 2 Kelvin. Delta Tf is equal to 2 Kelvin. Correct. So, can I put that value? Of course, yes. I can. Okay. So, that means that 2 is equal to Kf into Kf multiplied by, yes, 4 into 1000. Remember, I showed you that rough work I have done. Given mass divided by molar mass. Remember, exactly. That's how I'm going to solve it here also. See. Check it out. Okay. 342 into 96. Correct? If you solve this much, if you solve this much, how much will you get? Let's find it out. How much will I get here? How much will I get here? I'm going to get uh, uh, 16.416. Okay? I'm getting, I'm getting, this also I have to consider. Okay? So, I'm getting Kf value is equal to 16.416. 416, okay. Let's consider this to be equation 1. Cool, okay. Now what you do is, now we are going to take, let glucose. We are going to go for glucose now, okay. Let's go for glucose. Yeah. So now we know that mass of glucose is equal to what? Mass of glucose, here it is given 5%. So let's consider that to be 5 gram. Let's consider that to be 5 gram. Yes, so that means that, so, mass of water is equal to 100 minus 5, that is 95 gram. 100 minus 5 is equal to 95 gram. Correct? Yes. Same thing everybody, we are going to do, okay? And M of glucose is given as 180 gram. Check it out, okay? M Everything is given to you only, Baba. You just have to read the question properly. 180 gram per mole. Right. What are we going to do? We are going to do the same thing again. Delta Tf is equal to I, Kf, M. M is molality. I is going to be 1. I is going to be 1. And we have already calculated Kf. Kf is equal to 6.416. Let's substitute that value here. Let's substitute that value here. So, what will we get? We will get 16.416 into, same thing, same thing. 5 into 1000 divided by 180 into 95. 180 into 95. If we calculate this, how much will I get? Let's do this. If we calculate this, how much will I get? I will get... One second, check, check, check. Delta Tf is equal to 4.8 Kelvin. Okay? We are getting 4.8 Kelvin. Now, coming here, 
what will I get? What will I do? Delta T F will be equal to now two seventy three point one five minus four point eight, right? Two seventy three point one five Kelvin minus four point eight Kelvin. Let's do it. So delta T F is equal to two seventy three point one five Kelvin minus four point eight Kelvin. What is this equal to? This will be equal to. Chalo, let's check this out also. Yeah. Are you guys calculating? Calculate. Tell me the answer in the chat box, guys. Tell me the answer in the chat box, everybody. Okay. It is two sixty-eight point three five, isn't it? That's it. That's your answer. This is your final answer. Okay, this is your final answer. Got it? Clear? Did you understand how we calculated? So first of all, we did was we calculated it for sucrose. Okay, we calculated K F for sucrose because delta T F was already delta T F. We could figure it out from here, right? Delta T F we could calculate from the given value. Then we calculated K F. We took this K F value and we put it here. Then we found delta T F here. After calculating that, we figured the final delta T F. That is, we figured the freezing point of five percent glucose right here. Okay, understood, guys? Shall we move on? Let's take a look at the next question. Whoa, there are so many questions now. Let's do this. So when two point five six gram of sulfur was dissolved in hundred gram of C S two. The freezing point lowered by zero point three eight three Kelvin. Calculate the formula of sulfur. You are given K F value already for C S two that is three point eight three Kelvin kg per mole. Atomic mass of sulfur that is thirty two gram per mole is also given to you. Okay, it is also given to you. So let's do this, everybody. Now, what are the things that are given to us already? Let's write it down. We'll do this first. Okay, we will do this first. So we are given uh, WB. WB is equal to two point five six gram, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And WA is also given hundred gram. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now delta TF is also given. Delta T F is also given, which is equal to zero point three eight three Kelvin, right? Okay. Yes. K F value is also given. Let's write that also. K F value is how much? K F value is three point eight three. Kelvin kg per mole. Okay. Now, how about let's just substitute that in the expression. What is the expression that we have? Our expression will be. Let's see. M B is equal to K F into uh, W B into thousand. Divided by divided by delta T F into W A. Sorry, delta T F right. So we are going to substitute. Okay, substitute in the above expression. Now, how much will we get? So let's substitute here. How do we have to substitute? Very easy. Everybody knows this. Yes, M B is equal to what was it? K F. K F value we already have. That is three point eight three. Okay. Yes. Kelvin kg per mole into into what? Two point five six. Two point five six into thousand, right? 
into thousand divided by divided by zero point uh, delta T F into W A delta T F zero point three eight three. W A W A is hundred. Correct? Yes. Okay. Now, if I calculate this, we will have to use a calculator. I will at least very weak in mathematics. Very weak in mathematics. Check check. Okay. Two fifty six gram per mole. Okay. It's coming to two fifty six gram per mole. Okay, that's our MB. Now, molecular mass of S X we have to find, right? Yes, molecular mass of S X. Let's do it. What will it be? We are already given atomic mass. Yes, we are already given atomic mass. So that means it will be x into thirty-two, isn't it? Is equal to two fifty-six. X into thirty-two is equal to two fifty-six. Correct? Yes. So that means x is equal to two fifty-six divided by thirty-two. This, if you calculate, you will get eight. You will get eight. So that means that the formula of sulfur is this is your answer. Easy, easy peasy biryani is easy. Biryani is tasty. Sorry, biryani is easy. No, biryani is tough to make, but yeah, easy peasy biryani is tasty. Okay. Got it. Clear. Now, next part of it is blood cells are isotonic with 0.9 percent of sodium chloride solution. Of course. What happens if we place blood cell in a solution containing 1.2 percent sodium chloride solution and 0.4 percent sodium chloride solution? So this one is hypertonic and this one is hypotonic. You tell me, guys, what will happen? You tell me, guys, what will happen? Come on. In the first case, what will happen? Water will flow out of the cell, isn't it? Water will flow out of the cell. In the first one, water will flow out of the cell as one point two percent sodium chloride solution is hypertonic. Point two percent Okay? All right. Number two. Point four percent, what will happen here? The cell will swell up. <laughs> Water will flow into the cell, isn't it? Water will flow. Water will flow into the cell as point four percent solution is hypotonic. Right kids? Yes? We understand this? This is very easy? Very easy, very easy. You tell me guys. Very easy, right? Okay. Again, we are getting free of cost. Two more marks. Two marks. See, this is very easy. Isotonic, hypertonic, hypertonic. Is there anything that you want to remember? Hypertonic, you have to understand that whenever it is hypertonic. Okay. Mm, let's say. Let's, let's understand this, okay? Basically, imagine that there are too many people outside your house. If there are too many people outside your house, what will you do? You will also rush outside your house and you will be like, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? You left. The water will flow out. Just like the water also went out of the cell 
to understand what is going on outside same way you have to remember i understand a lot of people a lot of students they get confused ma'am what is hypotonic what is hypotonic what is hypotonic what is hypotonic you know it i know everybody knows it it's very basic but you get confused that which one is hypotonic when will it will when will it flow out when will it get in now understand imagine if there is a commotion outside your house if there is a huge ruckus that somebody has created too many people outside your house you will like ah, why are people shouting you will also go out right you will also run out and uh, run out to see what is happening so same way water flew out remember it this way now when there is when when the outside is very calm okay when the outside is very calm nothing is happening you'll be like hey, outside is so boring let's go sit inside only you know let's watch tv you will come home inside you will watch you will come you will come inside and you will watch some tv so here also what happens the water flows into the cell okay this is a very this is a very easy analogy that you can remember why you are writing the answer okay very easy moving on next now another important formula that comes into our that comes near us or that comes into picture is i is equal to total number of moles of particles after association or dissociation divided by number of moles of particles before association or dissociation now association is c n a it can it c n a becomes a n 1 minus alpha alpha by n and what is i again guys van t hoff factor that you just just register into your head i is van t hoff factor so 1 minus alpha plus alpha by n what is alpha alpha is the degree of association or dissociation degree of association or dissociation is called as alpha not called as is denoted as alpha if it is dissociation then you write a n which becomes n a understanding easy you no know? easy you no know? this n a becomes a n yes association and a n is becoming n a okay all right we will do some questions that time you will understand so once again here van t hoff factor will be 1 plus n alpha minus alpha okay let's do questions i think you will understand better okay you will understand this better chalo now tell me out of 0.1 molar aqueous solution of glucose and 0.1 molar aqueous solution of kcl which one will have a higher boiling point and why this is a common sense question guys an absolute common sense question you cannot make a mistake here you cannot just cannot you tell me which one will dissociate better which one will dissociate better hmm it will definitely very good yes the answer will definitely be kcl okay the answer will definitely be kcl why why because kcl will dissociate it's a colligative property boiling point is a colligative property isn't it which depends on which depends on the relative amount of the constituent yes it's de it depends on the relative amount of the constituent since more ions will come out of kcl when kcl will dissociate more ions will come out that is why the boiling point will increase here yes but when we talk about when we talk about glucose here glucose will not be able to dissociate completely you know glucose will not be able to dissociate completely which is why what will happen which is why what will happen we will have exactly exactly the boiling point will be lesser so let's write that down here okay kcl will have greater boiling point okay kcl uh, solution let's write yeah kcl solution ha huh. kcl or just write this will have greater boiling point bp is a colligative property colligative property that depends upon what that depends on the relative amount of the constituent ions okay colligative property 
depends on relative depends on relative amount of the constituent okay depends on One more explanation that we have to do is, uh, since since more ions will be produced by KCl than glucose, yes, as KCl is an ionic compound. KCl is an ionic compound. Chalo, let's write it here, okay? KCl is an ionic compound. More ions. more ions will be produced by KCl than glucose. That's our answer, okay? That's our answer. Sorry, is my energy looking a little less? Yeah, it's actually night and I'm recording. I'm hungry. <laughs> Chalo, let's finish it off quickly. Okay, let's finish it off quickly. Come on, guys. Okay, yes. So, do we understand this? Do we understand this? You know that, right? Boiling point is a colligative property that depends upon the amount of constituent ions. So, more ions will be produced by... Actually, you know what? Let's write it down here. Constituent ions. Why did I leave it like this? Yes. Constituent ions. KCl is an ionic compound and more ions will be produced by KCl than glucose. Hence, KCl will have higher boiling point okay hence kcl will have higher boiling point that we have already written it down now predict whether van t hoff factor i is less than one or greater than one in the following ch3 cooh dissolved in water Achha, when ch3 cooh will dissolve in water what will you get what will you get acetic acid is a weak acid will it completely dissociate of course not of course not that, that is a question that I should not even ask because I am pretty sure that you know it, isn't it? So, CH3COH, hello, let's write it down, yes? CH3COOH is a weak acid and it won't dissociate completely. Alright, so what? If it does not dissociate completely, okay, we got that. But so what? So what? How? We have to write the re reaction, no? How will the equation look like? Okay, so the equation will look a little bit like, I'm going to write it down here, okay? CH3COOH will give out what? It will give us in H2O. In H2O. O minus plus H plus. Is that right? Is that right? Yes. So the dissociation constant will be what? Dissociation constant alpha will be equal to. Dissociation constant alpha will be equal to. Let's write it down here. Alpha will be equal to. Yes, right? Oh, why did I write plus? Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, great mistake. No plus here. Okay. Divided by? Divided by what will it be? H2O. Yes. That means what are we going to get? That means what are we going to get, guys? It is going to be? I is equal to, the Van Hoff factor will be, I is equal to alpha n plus 1 minus alpha. Yes, and here acetic acid will be yielding 2 ions, right? It is yielding 2 ions, isn't it? 2 ions, that means, can we say that it is going to be more than 1? Chalo, let's write it down here, let's write it down. Chalo. 
I is equal to yes alpha n alpha n multiplied by multiplied no plus one minus L right yes okay now acetic acid will give two ions right So, what will happen? Yes, what will happen? I is equal to 1 plus alpha. So, so I is equal to 1 plus alpha. Yes, so that means more than 1. And exactly the same way, exactly the same way. Now, CH3COH dissolved in benzene my dear student when it goes to benzene it dimerizes okay dimerizes this will dimerize okay when it dimerizes what will you get when it dimerizes you will get less than same way like this you can write it down okay just that you will see just that you will see that ch3coh will equal, will be equal to yes it will give you two within bracket CH3COH. It has dimerized. When it has dimerized, then it will be less than 1. Okay? Less than 1. Association, right? It dimerized. It dimerized. So, it will be less than 1. Same like this, you can solve it. I don't have enough space, guys. I don't have enough space. Otherwise, I would have solved it. But I'm pretty sure that you can do it. I don't have to do the hard work now anymore. Okay? Chalo. Give reasons for the following. This has come for 3 marks everybody. Measurement of osmotic pressure method is uh, preferred for determination of molar masses of macromolecules such as proteins and polymers. Why? Why, 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 why? why? So, you have heard that right? Proteins and macromolecules what happens? At higher temperature? At higher temperature? Yes, absolutely. They are not stable. Okay, and osmotic pressure is me measured at? room temperature that's why so let's write that down let's write that down proteins and uh, polymers are not stable at higher temperatures And osmotic pressure and osmotic pressure is measured at room temperature. All right, got it clear. Next question. Oh, I solved everything or what? No, where is it? Huh, next question. Aquatic animals are more comfortable in cold water than in warm water because O2 is more soluble in cold water. Yes, O2 is more soluble. What am I writing? This is sleepy nobitama. O2 is more soluble in cold water. Okay? Water. Yeah. Not saying water. <laughs> yes. Moving on. Elevation of boiling point of 1 m KCl solution is nearly double than that of 1 m sugar solution. Guys, this is very easy. You can answer. Come on, guess it, guess it, and let me know. Yes, and let me know. In, let me know in the comment section, everybody. What is the answer, guys? What is the answer? Come on, tell me. What is the answer, everybody? I know you know the answer. I very well know that you know the answer. What is the answer? Of course, due to dissociation of KCl into K plus and Cl minus, isn't it? Yes. But there is. You don't get to see such dissociation in where. You don't get to see such dissociation in. Yep. You were right. Sugar solution. Chal, let's write it down. 
due to dissociation of KCl to K plus plus Cl minus. Whereas such dissociation is not seen in sugar. Gotcha? Yeah? Okay. Next question, next question. Achha, haan, this is a very important note guys. Please, please, please do make sure of this. Let me start mark it also. The values of Kf and Kb, right? They depend upon the nature of the solvent, okay? They always depend upon the nature of the solvent, okay? All right, moving on. Now, Visha took two aqueous solution. Hmm? One containing 7.5 gram of urea. Molar mass is 60 gram. Once again, a lot of question about urea. Where is Coca-Cola light? Nowhere to be seen. All about urea. Anyway, and the other containing 42.75 gram of substance, Z in 100 gram of water, respectively. It was observed that both the solution froze at the same temperature. Calculate the molar mass of Z. Have you guys heard this song, Coca-Cola Light? After your exam, hear it, okay? You will definitely laugh. You will definitely laugh. Now, you must be you must be judging me, no? That ma'am, what kind of songs you listen to? No, I don't listen to I don't put it on my earphones and listen to it and like, you know, dance around. I got to hear it somewhere. Anyway, let's solve this, guys. Let's solve this. So, what is given? We are given two solutions, right? Visha has taken two solutions. So, basically, we have solution one and we have solution two, right? Now, let me change the color. Otherwise, that becomes too monotonous. Who likes monotonous life, isn't it? Yeah. Chal. So what is given to us? What is given to us? It, it is given that weight of urea is 7.5 gram, isn't it? Weight of urea is equal to 7.5 gram. Yes. We are also given the weight of other, this thing, weight of substance. Let's just write weight of substance. Weight of substance is given as 42.75. Alright. Okay. Next, what else is given? Molar mass. Yes. Molar mass of molar mass of urea is given. So let's write that down. Molar mass. I'm only singing to keep myself awake. Do you do that too? You must try it out. With such horrendous voice, you will definitely stay awake. Anyway, molar mass, question mark. We are not given that. Okay, we have to find it out. Okay. Now, what else is given? 100 gram of water. Yes, yes. 100 gram of water. Cool. And uh, weight of solvent, 100 gram. Right. Here also. Weight of solvent, 100 gram. Cool? Cool, 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 cool. Okay. All right. Now, what do we have to do? What do we have to do? We know our formula. Don't we know it? We don't know it. So, let's do it. Delta Tf is equal to I Kf F. Let's consider I is equal to 1. We know that. Urea is not an electrolyte. So, I is equal to 1. Right, so that means that K, F, M, okay, all right. Now, if delta T, F, yes, they are saying, see, both the solution froze at the same temperature. So that means that freezing, this, if this is, this is same, that means M1 should also be equal to M2. Am I right? Right, common sense, common sense everybody. If they are freezing at the same temperature, that means M1 should be equal to M2, correct. Great. M1 should be equal to M2. Now let's use our actual formula. Yes. What is our actual formula? Same thing guys. Same thing. Given mass. Yes. We can make a song out of it now. Given mass divided by 
molar mass is equal to equal to what? Thousand divided by weight of solvent. Yes. Are you not equal to? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not equal to. Too much singing and all happened, no? That's why I think. Huh. Multiplied by what? Thousand divided by weight of solvent. Correct. Yes. That's our formula. Same on this side as well, okay? Same on this side as well. What we have? We have again given mass divided by molar mass again into 1000 divided by weight of solvent. Okay. Ajay, now check it out here. See, weight of solvent 100 gram of water, weight of solvent 100 gram. So that means these both are equal, equal. Yes, these both are equal, equal, absolutely equal. So cancel it, cancel it. We can cancel it. Now what do we have? Now we are left with, now we are left with 7.5 divided by 60 equal to, what do we have? 42.75, 42.75 divided by x. From here, if you calculate x, what will you get? Come on guys, calculate. You have calculator, not me. You have calculator, not me. Tell me. X is equal to, I will also have to calculate now. I will also have to calculate. Hmm. What is the answer? Found it. 3, 4, 2 gram per mole. Okay. It is 342 gram per mole. That's the answer. Did you also get it right? This is the correct answer. Check once, okay? Check once if you got the same number. Same number if you got it. Chal. Now, a solution of 0.1 mole, 0.1 m of Na2SO4 is dissolved to the extent of 95%. What would be its osmotic pressure at 27 degrees Celsius? Woo! What an easy question. What do you have to do? Pi is equal to CRT. Pi is equal to CRT. Isn't it? That's what we're going to do. Chalo, let's do it. Osmotic pressure is equal to pi and pi is equal to CRT. Now, what do we do? What do we do? Ajah, temperature. Temperature is given 27 degrees Celsius. So let's let's do this first. T is equal to 273 plus 27, right? Yes. Which will be equal to 300 Kelvin? 300 Kelvin. See this much arithmetic. Simple at arithmetic. I know. Otherwise, I'll have to go and sit in Shimon sir's class to understand everything. Zero knowledge about mathematics. Anyway. Now, we are given 95%, so that means alpha is equal to what? Alpha is equal to 95 by 100. Am I right? Which is equal to 0 0.95. Right on? Yes. Now, Hoff factor, I is equal to what? 1 plus, yes, yes, come on, come on. Say it out, say it out, say it out. 1 plus alpha, yes. Then, very good, n minus 1. I am assuming that you are telling me the answer. Chal. Okay, now let's check it out. Okay, so 1 plus, what is alpha? 0.95, just substitute my dear student, just substitute. Achha. Now, what is n? Okay, how do we calculate n? Check it out. Na2SO4, if you dissociate this here, what will you get? 2Na plus and SO4 minus that is 3, 3 ions, 3 ions, right? Yes. So can I write N minus 1, that is 3 minus 1? I can, right? I have that freedom, isn't it? I have that freedom. Very good. I have that freedom. Great. So that means that, now let's, let's calculate this here. So we have calculated I. What will be I? I will be equal to somewhat uh, 2.9. 2.9, okay, I will be equal to somewhat 2.9. Now, let's calculate pi is equal to ICRT, okay, 
one second. I is equal to one. We know this. Now two point nine into zero point one, isn't it? Yes. Chalo. Two point. Oh no 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 no. I is not equal to one. Sorry sorry sorry. Sorry, I is equal to two point nine. We just calculated it. See, I is equal to two point nine. Okay, so two point nine into zero point one. Yes, C is basically zero point one. It's given to you. Multiplied by R is already given to you. So zero point zero eight two one liter ATM T minus one. Mole minus one, yes, and into three hundred. Oh my God, that's a lot of things to write. Into three hundred, yeah. Now, if you calculate this, how much will you get? If you calculate this, let's calculate this too. Let's calculate this. Seven point one four atm, yes. Yes, absolutely right. Okay. That's the correct answer. So osmotic pressure is seven point one four atm. Okay. All right, guys. Got it? Clear? Next. 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 Oh, I solved it. Solved it there. Okay. Now, gas A is more soluble in water than gas B at same temperature. Okay, at the same temperature. Which one of the two gases will have the higher value of Kh? That is Henry's constant, and why? Okay. So the solubility of a gas in a liquid, where does it depend on? It depends on temperature, the partial pressure of the gas over the liquid, right? What else? The nature of the solvent and the nature of the gas. Four things. Yes. Now the most common solvent is water. Yes. The gas which is more soluble in water will have lower value of Kh. No. Correct. We have read this, isn't it? So that means that gas B will have higher value of K H. So you want me to write it down? Let me write it down. Yeah. Let me write it down. Here you go. Yes. What is the answer? The solubility of gas depends on. Ha. Huh, depends on what? What did I say? Solubility of gas in a liquid. Ah, oh, in a liquid. We forgot to write that. Of gas in a liquid. A gas in a liquid depends on. Ha, huh, depends on what are the things that I said? What are the things that I said? Come on, guys, tell me. You know what? Let me just write this down again. Okay? It's looking weird. I want you to be. I want you all to be able to read it. The solubility of gas hmm. depends on what are the things that I said. Yes, depends on temperature. Temperature, then partial pressure of the gas, partial pressure of the gas over the liquid, what else, what else guys, yes, what else? The nature of the solvent, yes. And, and, and one last thing. One last thing, guys. Nature of the gas and nature of the gas. Okay? All right? Now, what did I say? I said that the most common solvent, usually we know that it is water. So, the gas which is more soluble in water will have a lower value of Kh. So, let me write it down. The gas which is soluble 
in water will have lower KH value. That means that, that means that gas B will have higher value. Gas B, hence, will have higher KH value, right? Yes, correct everybody? Great. Now, in non-ideal solution, what type of deviation shows the formation of maximum boiling azeotropes? What is it? More negative. More negative deviation, isn't it? Absolutely, yes, my dear student. It is more negative deviation, okay? More negative deviation from a solution that shows large negative deviation from Raoult's law will form a maximum boiling temperature at a specific composition. Sure, let's write that also oh, here. So, uh, what did I say? What did I say? Uh, yeah, in a maximum boiling azeotrope, yes, the liquid mixture has a higher boiling point when the has a higher boiling point than the individual. That's obviously common sense, right? The liquid mixture will have a higher boiling point than the individual parts, right? Why does that occur? Why does that occur? Due to negative deviation, due to negative deviation, okay. So, a solution that shows large negative deviation from Raoult's law forms a maximum boiling azeotrope at specific composition. So, let's write that. A solution that shows that shows large negative deviation okay that shows large negative deviation from Raoult's law forms okay forms a maxima boiling as you draw. okay that's our answer all right that's our answer got it moving on moving on now we have another question. Calculate the boiling point of solution when 2 gram of Na2SO4, M is 142 gram per mole, was dissolved in 50 gram of water, assuming Na2SO4 undergoes complete ionization. Very easy. What is going to be our I? First of all, okay, let's quickly solve it, guys. I is equal to, I do not want to waste too much of your time. I will be equal to 3 by 1, which is equal to 3, because... Na2SO4 goes complete dissociation which means that you will get 2Na plus plus SO4 minus, right? This is what you are going to get. This is what you are going to get, isn't it? This is for 3 marks. Check it out guys. We can't lose it. We can't lose it. Okay, We know how to solve it. Now, what are the given factors here? The given factors are that WB is equal to what? WB is given 2 gram, right? 2 gram, isn't it? What else is given? WA. WA is also given 50 gram. See? WA is equal to 50 gram. Okay? Alright? Then, the uh, what else is given? MB is given, right? MB is given. Yes, MB is given 142. isn't it and then we are also given kb kb is kb is also given kb is 0 0.52 0 0.52 kelvin kg per mole right right everybody yes now let's substitute what else we just have to substitute isn't it 
So let's substitute and let's find it out. So let's substitute the value in our in our expression, the usual expression that we have delta T B. Now this is going to be take it out, check it out, take it out. Boiling point is given. So what elevation in boiling point we have to calculate. That means no more delta T F. This time we are going to get delta T B. Okay. So delta T B is equal to I into what is it? K B. If you remember, yes. K B into W B into thousand divided by M B into W A. Yes. So you just have to fill it up. I is what? I is equal to three. If you remember, yes. Three K B is already given. Point five two. Point five two. Yes. Okay, into WB is also given. What is WB? WB is two gram, isn't it? Two gram into thousand. Yes, thousand g kg. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Now the MB is. 142. Okay, and what is WA? WA is also given 50 gram. All right. Now, if we calculate it, let's calculate it. What will we get? Let's calculate it. What will we get? Are you also getting this? 0.439 Kelvin. Yes. 0.439 Kelvin. This is what I'm getting. Check it out if you are also getting this. So boiling point of solution will be. What will be the BP of solution? But hello, BP of solution will be TB is equal to TB not plus delta TB, isn't it? TB is equal to TB not plus delta TB. That means. What is TB not? Zero point four three nine Kelvin, right? We got this, isn't it? Now, what do we know? We already know that TB not will be equal to three seven three point one five Kelvin. Yes, three seven three point one five Kelvin plus delta TB. We have found already that is zero point four three nine Kelvin. This, if you solve it, how much will you get? This, if you solve it, we will get three seven three point five 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 eight three seven three point five eight Kelvin. Yes, that's it, my dear students. That's it. Next question. Check it out. When methyl alcohol is added to water, boiling point of water increases. Methyl alcohol is added to water. Boiling point of water increases. Yes, absolutely right. True. Okay. When a volatile solute is added to a volatile solvent, elevation in boiling point is observed. Really? Really? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. This is false. Yes. So that means assertion A is correct. Reason R is incorrect. Statement. Okay. Sit down. Solve some of the questions and see if you are able to do it. If not. Try, check out the solution, and then try to do it again. Okay, and then try to do it again. And with this note, everybody, all the very, 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 very best for your exam. I will see you very soon. Yes, and uh, sleep well. Don't skip out your, uh, don't skip your meals. Okay, and lots of love. See ya. Yes. Bye. -bye.